I'm Deborah Aden. I'm the Executive Director of the Everyman and Playhouse Theatres. We're celebrating one year since the new Everyman opened its doors. Since then we've had wonderful productions, we've had lots of full houses, we've had productions by our youth theatre, we've had great parties in that building, people have had their weddings in the Everyman. Um, but today we're looking in particular at the wall of portraits of Liverpool people which adorn the front of the building. Lots of people have asked us who are these people, how did they come to be immortalised on the front of the new theatre and how were the shutters made and this film traces that story from taking the photographs, meeting the people, going through manufacture and through into the opening of the new building and tells us their story, the story of the building and we hope that this means that next time you come to the Everyman you'll be able to tell your friends how these shutters came to be. Somewhere in the conversations about shutters and cathedrals and the name Everyman, Steve, our architect, came up with this idea that the shutters should literally be kind of every man and woman of Liverpool. And so the idea began to emerge that could we almost literally make the architecture out of the people of Liverpool? And we began to think about the inspiration of, say, the west front of a medieval cathedral, which is made up of the, the figures of saints and representation of a society. And then I have had a memory of going on holiday and standing outside a medieval cathedral in France and being really moved by carvings that were of the craftsmen that had made it and ordinary people. There they were statues of St Paul and St Peter and all of that, but there were just these very beautiful 13th century incarnations of ordinary people living at that time. Rich, poor, large, small, but also that sense of it as a single coherent unit and I think that was that was the thing that began to feel inspiring and interesting um, for us when we started to think about how the, the building's facade should appear um, and also the building has got to be very sustainable it faces southwest so it gets a lot of afternoon um, and evening sunshine which we need to sunshade because we want the building to be as sustainable as it can possibly be so we actually need shutters to cool the office building, cool the interior of the building. So the combination of shutters and life-size portraits of individual people started to come together and, and then we hit on the idea of these three layers of shutters across the face of the building, um, each of which has 35 individual life-size portraits of Liverpool people. Well, then we started to think about who the subjects would be and where we'd find the subjects. Um, and throughout the process, having invited people to come in and have their photographs taken, having gone out to various communities where we work um, in, in terms of education and outreach activities, uh, to make sure that we've got a real sense of diversity in, in terms of the people of Liverpool that are represented on the building, that we can say pretty categorically that there's no such thing as ordinary people. Every single person that we met um, was extraordinary in their own very particular way. <laughs> that's it, that's good. <laughs> that's lovely. One more. That's it. Dan Kenyon, who uh, is a local photographer and a very wonderful photographer, he's been tireless actually in terms of how many photographs he's taken of every person that's come forward and he had a wonderfully natural way of representing people with dignity and kind of beauty. Yeah, we set up a white background and uh, we've had a good range of people. Um, because everyone's shot full length, it, the shoes are as important as the jewellery uh, and the uh, Almost the silhouettes are interesting uh, to get right as well. It's all very much in the shape. So if you wear a sort of baggy sweatpants and a t-shirt, then it, it's not as interesting as some of the sort of wide skirts and things that we can get in. I like wearing cravats. Uh, <laughs> it's just me. Uh, no, I. Um, any day, I like to overdress rather than underdress. So I'm not a guy for sort of um, uh, trainers and jeans. 
I, I'm a fellow who's always liked to dress up. You know, it's a good record of the diversity of people that we have in the community at this time in 2012 and how many things are changing. And um, the different types of people that we do have, you know, we have very creative people, artistic people, sporty people. Uh, and as you see, so I brought my, my little book to show that I'm quite a spiritual person, Care of the Soul. So I've, I've brought that along as a, as a record. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I just stood in the middle of the room, they took a photo of me and it was quite weird at first, but once you get into it, it's, it's good. I really enjoyed it and I'd do it again. Actually, I'm thinking about taking it up as a new career, being a male model. It's that whole idea of being every man should also encompass every wheelchair. It's, it was actually quite cool. It was very enjoyable. Uh, good. Thank you. Had fun, like it. And I hope he puts you in the building. <laughs> what, what we'll do is we'll look at all the, the images. Um, they'll go on a collective site for the judges to choose from. I know we've taken hundreds of photos. I mean, we've got to whittle it down now. Yeah, I'll scoop the hat and see if we can still get him to work in a frame. Dan, the photographer, Steve Tompkins, the architect and myself, will be looking at every single photo. Yeah, I like that one and whittling those down to 150. Oh, that's rather lovely. Mm, OK. And then print out those 150, pretty much to scale. And then try and create a whole of the ultimate 105. Shouldn't we be composing on the table as a unit? Yeah, let's do that. They have to somehow interplay with each other and create one architectural mm. facade that Steve will think is a beautiful building. As an image, maybe fantastic. Mm. And um, that we have to get a balance of people. And if we've got, you know, 10 people that are broadly the same, we'll be whittling down to within that 10. These two look like the same man. We're down to really good shots now, aren't we? I avoid everyone, so two props in a row. Have we got any unnaturally long rows of men or women? It's quite alternate, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. We've got two men, three men together there. Yeah. Two men there, that's all right. Do you want to stick them up like they are now? Yeah. That's what we're getting on. <laughs> Top row. Blue Tap Production line, anybody? Oh, yeah. We've just finished um, arranging the portraits, um, which are the image behind me, and, and I think we're all, we're all really thrilled with the way it's worked out, both in terms of the, the visual appearance of the facade, but also the diversity and, and the, and the cross-section of, of the community that, that we've managed to collect together. that are going to be represented on the Everyman facade. And I've been staring at these people in 2D for months, choosing them, celebrating them, and seeing them all in the flesh is amazing. And we really hope that not only will they feel part of the physical building, but they really come to feel part of the life of the building in the future. So we wanted to involve them, make them feel that the Everyman belonged to them, and to find out a bit more about them. We gave them a book about the history of the Everyman. We asked them to talk about them and their lives, their families. Um, and uh, each season, they'll be getting a pair of tickets, uh, complimentary tickets for life. I, I didn't expect to be treated like this, like free wine and free food. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, just being treated with respect is quite nice. And it gives us the opportunity to go to the theatre. I didn't expect to be on it at all, so like, to get the phone call and find an out, it's amazing, it's really exciting. For the process, they have to be turned to black and white, and then we need to take the contrast up to the point where we stripped maybe 70 or 80% of the information out, so we've got the strongest blacks and the strongest whites in there. Then that will give us 
just enough information to, to cut in through the metal. So we've been doing quite a lot of work with prototypes, um, a process of laser cutting the photographic image into metal sheets which form the shutters. Um, and so that's, that's quite an interesting technical process. We water jet cut the panels. The process is using high pressure water with a, a, a medium called garnet to achieve a cut quality in most materials. We apply 60,000 psi of water pressure, focus it down to around about a millimeter in diameter before we add the abrasive garnet. We accept the DXF file from client, put it through our computer systems and generate what's called NC code for our machine tools. Um, that's fed down and, and uh, a network cable and the machine tools pull from that uh, and follow the guide that the program has given. It will cut any sheet material other than diamond. We're manufacturing round about eight a day, um, but it's a little bit difficult to measure because there's a massive difference between cutting the silhouette of a child and that of a, um, an adult. Well, seeing it for the first time, the detail on it is um, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I've, I've seen uh, images before that, that, don't, that look more like a, uh, a newspaper photograph, you know, f full of dots, that's what I'm used to. But, but this is really quite amazing. It's, it's really quite detailed. I like it. Anodizing is a, a sort of chemical pickling process that happens with aluminium and it gives it a, a chemically bonded colour onto the surface of the aluminium. You dip it into a bath of anodizing solution for a certain amount of time. And the, um, the clever and interesting thing about this particular surface is that it's been anodized twice and etched with masking fluid so that it gets different textures and two slightly different reflectivities and slightly different colours. And the first time they dip it in, it has a, a masked pattern on it, so um, the anodizing only hits that bit and then they etch it with acid so it eats slightly into the surface, then they anodize it again, um, and you, so you get this very rich, um, multi-layered finish um, on the panel. It almost appears like the sheet has been cast in, in a sand bed, so it's got a lovely rough cast surface on it, so it doesn't feel too smooth, doesn't feel too slippery or too shiny. Well, I never actually saw my portrait come out of the tank, but everyone else's portrait looked absolutely fantastic. The ones that we did, did actually see. And it did look amazing. It was fantastic just to see the actual dipping procedure going in and then coming out. It was just like a new technology that I've never actually um, encountered before, or I was quite impressed with the whole, whole process. It was quite nice. The thing that uh, struck me was we've been told these uh, uh, shutters were life-size, but when you're standing beside it, you think, that's me. It's quite weird, really, you know. I never expected it to be that big, but I, I guess that's me. Wonderful.
In May 2013, the panels arrived at the Everyman, seven neatly wrapped stacks on trolleys. Gilbert Ash, our contractors, actually had to make a special cradle so that they could be craned safely up onto the roof, uh, where they were stored until they were ready to be installed on the front of the building. The grandchildren like it, you know. And I brought them down and they said, that's me up there, and they said, no, it's not. I said, well, walk down the street a bit and have a look back. At it. The more you walk around it, the more you can see. Oh gosh, it's granddad. Wow, we like that. People tell me how good the front of the building looks, let alone just my picture, but this whole ethos of including everybody into the theatre, welcoming everybody into the theatre. And it is, I, I only said a couple of days ago that in all the years I've been attending theatre, re regardless of whether down at Stratford, London, here, Birmingham, New York, it is the most inclusive place I think I've ever felt in. And to be recognised for that on, on the front is, is rather special. I feel quite proud when I look up at the, uh, the actual images on the outside of the Everyman and to actually identify myself amongst the 105, it's, it's amazing, it really is. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling to know that this is going to be here for such a, a long time. It'll probably outlive me and it'll be there for other generations of my family to see as well. One of the real joys of the Shutters is actually the internal experience of them. We really enjoy them in our offices. The shadows that they cast throughout the building are very beautiful on the floor. Um, and you see them in many unexpected places. Uh, there's a beautiful stairwell where you catch the shadows as well, which is one of my favourite places. And of course, the shutters are very practical things. Depending on whether a staff member is, needs less or more light, we just use them with our hands to close them and open them. It's a very simple mechanism. Well, the other use of the, the images, which we absolutely love, is the manifestations on the glass all the way around the buildings. You have to put something on glass to prevent people from actually walking into it and hurting themselves. And we didn't want to have something as simple as dots. We didn't want to have something as corporate as a logo. Um, and then the architectural team came up with the idea of using the, the figures of the people who were on the portrait wall. And it's just wonderful. It's a, just a fantastic presence all the way through the building. I'm feeling absolutely great about it. I mean, it's really exciting to see this big installation up there in situ, in reality, scale one-to-one. -one. From the minute that we took the covers down, before we'd even opened the building, people's responses have been really, really phenomenal to the portrait wall. It's really captured people's imaginations and it feels like a Liverpool landmark already. In a way, that's, that's the best endorsement that you could ever have as, a, as an architect. It, this is a building that lifts the heart, it makes people smile, it makes people feel like they're 
part of the human race, part of a collective body of people that live in this city and, and now own this building. And people would just stop in the streets. I mean, probably if we looked outside the window now, there's someone with a camera taking a photo of the facade. So as well as what it meant to the individuals, I think we both love what it's meant for the city, that people find it intriguing, people want to take photos of it. And I think it expresses the heart of the everyman better possibly than we even ever imagined.